For our next stop, let's step back in time to the beginnings of this city, which is the story of Fort Concho, a frontier fort dating back to the 1860s and still standing about 150 years later. This is one of the best preserved frontier forts west of the Mississippi. 42 acres, 26 buildings, and a lot of fun, and we're darn proud of it. I can see why. It doesn't take much to imagine that this is what it was like 150 years ago. Even with the wind. This is site manager Bob Bluthart. But to give this forward a little context, a brief history lesson is in order. You see, when Texas joined the United States in 1845, most of its land was uninhabitable because it was too dangerous. Marauding tribes made settling the West a bloody affair, but the U.S. needed towns. And so to pave the way for settlement, the U.S. built a line of forts in Texas, extending from the Red River to the Rio Grande. By the 1850s, that line had advanced even farther as the U.S. sought to protect the towns and trade routes of its citizens. And in the 1860s, the U.S. established Fort Concho along the banks of the Concho River. But what was once the middle of nowhere is now the middle of a bustling city, and tourists now occupy buildings that were once inhabited by soldiers, soldiers living on the frontier awaiting their taste of the action. This was Army life from the Civil War era right up until the early 1900s. And it was a five-year enlistment, three meals a day, a couple of uniforms, and all the adventure you can handle. <laughs> and there wasn't much of it. <laughs> oh, man, but it sounds like it'd be an adventurous gig, right? Sounds nice, but yeah. in reality, most people joined the Army back then because they had no other option. And you get $13 a month. It was one of the better-paying jobs in this country. And for the black soldiers, called the Buffalo Soldiers, who uh -huh. were stationed here, it was one of the only good gigs that they could get in that time period. In post-Civil War America, life out here was hard. Soldiers had to take care of their own, and that meant doing everything from war patrol to potty patrol. Well, this is the post hospital, which is the largest building on the site, and I think that tells a story unto itself. Yeah. This was the healthcare system back in the 1870s, and this was the only hospital of its kind for thousands of square miles. Wow. Your nurse to your brain surgeon all combined into this one person, right? This is the whole right? thing. If you had a sniffle or you had to lose a leg, this was where it where was done. <laughs> Each building here tells a different story about life at a frontier fort, which doesn't look as bad if you're sitting in the officer's chair. I want to be on this side of the parade grounds. The money was better, the food was better, and the housing was better. Yeah. Hasn't changed in 200 years. <laughs> Officers could ship almost anything out here that could fit in a wagon, including their wives, kids, and high society etiquette. Even though they were 200 miles from the nearest railhead, they tried to stay up to date and just classy. Yeah, and ladies and at the this, time. this is not the barracks. Uh, yeah, This right. is not the mess halls. So this is fairly high Victorian frontier style. It's amazing that so many of these buildings are still standing or have been almost perfectly rebuilt to match the era. And even though you are right in the middle of the city, the feeling is purely frontier. That at any moment the bugle may sound, the horses may ready, and it's time to ride the range. With the safety the fort provided and the presence of water, the Concho River Valley was prime for settlement, which is when San Angelo popped up from the prairie. And it was a Wild West town if there ever was one. If you liked this video, chances are you're going to love another video that's somewhere right about here. Or you can visit thedaytripper.com. But above all, what I want you to do most, remember the Alamo. I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos.